When VMware approached me, um, they mentioned the theme of today was intrinsic security. And I absolutely fell in love with the term. But the first thing that came to my mind uh, were how do I get intrinsic security into the brainwaves of employees of organizations in our country? Because that is the layer that I am most concerned about. So over about 70% of the breaches that I've experienced as a CISO for the last five years, the ones that had the most impact from a financial perspective was as a result of penetrating people. We, we know that because people are wired to trust, and that's really what the attackers know and what they take advantage of. 91% of attacks, like the ones on the Democratic National Committee, the one at Yahoo, were all, all started with a phishing email. So why are people wired to trust? Well, in order to develop friendships, uh, meet new colleagues in the workplace, hand over our children to daycare centers or to schools, we have to trust. We do it every day. Um, as well, there's actually some research that says that feel-good hormones called oxytocin gets released when you uh, trust and build new relationships. Uh, if you look at this slide, this is someone that has a blindfold on about to jump out of an airplane. And many people who are dedicated to the mission, if someone who they think is their boss asked them to jump out of a plane, they would. So I have some very uh, real examples that I've seen and many of my colleagues have seen. It, it hits all of us sometimes at the same time. Um, where we see junior, both junior folks and very senior folks get affected at the same, at the same layer. So we had one that had uh, a traveling CEO send her an email saying, listen, I'm in an airport. I just changed banks. I really need you to change my bank account. She responded, of course, company cop policy means that you have to sign in to our, our, our uh, portal and do it on your own. She... Um, sent that back, but the CEO doubled down, the imposter CEO doubled down and said, no, really, this has to be done this afternoon, and please CC your manager. So she did it. Um, she didn't want to get fired. Uh, I th I'm sure this happens in real life by real CEOs that need their things like this, these requests ad hoc happen, and she did it. Um, the other uh, situation, which was um, a little more impactful, was something called a, a woman or a man in the middle browser attack, where um, one of our CFOs, all they did was click on a link, one of the many phishing emails that you get, there was a link, they clicked it, they didn't enter their credentials, uh, he thought that was all there was to it, but it did download an invisible uh, a malware, a banking trojan called an emotet. So when he went to the URL, he typed in the URL of his legitimate banking site, um, the malware basically gave him a prompt that, that, that the malware created on his machine. When he put in his username, password, and one-time text token, the hacker then uh, captured that and logged in and moved the money. The, the other one, um, which is probably the most sophisticated, where we had a hacker actually sitting inside uh, an email account of a payroll clerk. And the attacker was watching for about a month um, about how uh, the analyst was processing payment, what sort of invoice was coming across the desk. Um, and they finally, the hacker finally found a one $800,000 payment that had to go out to a vendor. Um, she then decided this was the one. So um, she created a false second line approval email that was sent to the back office processing, say, please reroute um, the payment to this bank account number. Uh, so this goes to process. A lot of companies are now revamping, not relying on email, because fundamentally email is not a secure medium to process um, money in, in these amounts. Um, so the payment that was over a million dollars actually did get uh, uh, did go outbound and was not uh, able to reco be recovered. All right, so people process technology. Um, we've all heard about it at the beginning of our, our career. Uh, it really does come true to life as you move through your career and you see how the combination of the three is the most effective way to mitigate most security solutions. Um, the first one is understanding the user groups that are most affected. 
Um, LinkedIn is where attackers are going. Um, they're looking for people with payroll, HR, or finance. As I mentioned, I've seen um, CEOs and CFOs making millions of dollars clicking as often as very junior folks. Um, so uh, my recommendation is getting everyone in the finance teams, everyone in the HR teams, as well as the administrative assistance of your business management that often have access, full access to your CEO or CFO's email box and have in-person training. Most web-based training, uh, when, I t when I ask folks uh, to be transparent, they usually try to click through it. So the any anti-phishing security training you're doing, people are, really want to do something else, they click through it. I recommend uh, go, going there in person, answering their questions authentically. It'll also, also show them how important it is uh, to you. Also, do, giving one hour uh, training once a year is just not the way uh, we as CISOs are seeing uh, it to be effective. People learn much better with rapid short bursts of training um, using gamification um, and interactive um, techniques. Uh, we're also uh, inserting warning messages, both either in the header and or the body of an email. So the first time you receive an email uh, from an external sender for the first time, there's going to be a warning in red saying, are you sure you know this person? Act with caution. Um, we also are, are recommending adding phishing buttons, report me buttons in your, in your taskbar. Um, it makes it much easier for users just to click a button. It gets routed to uh, the right teams that can analyze whether those are bad mails. Lastly, technology. So implementing best of breed email security gateways, uh, creating VIP lists of those that are most targeted and creating enhanced uh, monitoring. Ultimately, two-factor authentication for any type of web-based mail, personal, uh, or corporate, as well as two-factor for privileged accounts is absolutely essential. I will also say in terms of getting or hacking into the brains of the employees in your organization, use them. Use them to figure out what resonates with them. And in fact, one of the uh, portfolio companies that I, that I worked with was a marketing advertising company, and they knew their culture. They were creatives. They were very, very skeptical. So they really used that mindset to turn around the topic, and it worked very effectively. So you know, we talked about reducing the attack uh, surface. We talked about building in security. Um, the CEO of VMware at the recent RSA conference talked about how 80% of security products today and 80% of capital that's going into new security startups are on the reactive front. We need to shift that to the proactive front and making sure that security is intrinsic both in your infrastructure and your applications as discussed earlier um, as well as inside your people are absolutely essential to the success of your security story.